This is the Rollmaster Classic actual play set in Terry K. Anther's excellent Shadow World using Fantasy Grounds. You can find session summaries, items and characters on World Anvil, where our campaign is called The Praise of Old Men. Previously, one of the Portal Rods and the Ashling Stone have been recovered, but at a cost. Only Victoria has exited the tomb unscathed. Cran has suffered multiple wounds, but will live. The rest of the companions fate hang in the balance, however. Numal has been battered into unconsciousness. Ugnan, possibly dead with a heart attack, and a heavily bleeding cherry has been mauled senseless by a large silver salamander. Silk has fled the temple, invisible but alone, surrounded by the demons of Terek Nev. Um, for those of you listening, now that we know we have an audience, the game might be a little bit fragmented as we hop from Silk's mini-adventure and the rest of the party. Uh, and for you guys, if you can just bear with me as we jump around a little bit. I'm hoping that you'll get caught up today, otherwise things are going to go horribly wrong for some of you. Uh, are there any questions about the situation from you, John Cran? Because obviously you missed the last session. I was expecting to see far more progress, gentlemen. <laughs> uh, no, that's okay. fine. Uh, we're out of the frying pan into the fire, by the looks of things. So. Yeah, I'm just sharing the combat tracker with you now, so you can have a double check on where you stand as regards damage. Uh, Cherry is unconscious and has been hit quite hard by something. Um, the silvery salamander, as it stands over her body and lifts its large maw away from her neck, you can see that something is glistening on its ivory teeth. Um, not saliva. The sheen that covers its teeth is faintly green. Some sort of venom or something of that sort. So Cherry has clearly been poisoned. Silk, you'll remember that these demonic children, um, though small, their insidious danger is that they tend to swarm and one bite can send you into unconsciousness. Mm -hmm. So you want to avoid getting bitten if you can. I think last or a number of sessions ago, one of you got a bit of a gnawing to, um, to a leg. All right, folks, let's have some initiative rolls then and we'll we'll get going. Um, even if zero. you're unconscious, even if you're OK, if you want to leave yours at zero or roll an initiative, I don't mind. OK, <laughs> uh, right. So we'll start with, unfortunately, it's the silver salamander who gets to go first. So the creature looks up, Victoria, as you emerge through the curtain and it just actually backs away its talons dragging across the floor, making a grating noise. And it crouches down, somewhat reminiscent of a cat about to pounce. You can see its tail swishes gently to and fro across the floor, making a faint scratching noise as its scales catch on some of the damaged and raised tiles. It bunches down with its belly touching the floor and it opens its mouth and hisses but it hasn't done anything else just yet silk you're actually up next what do you want to do you stand alone by the wall remember there is this dark murk that filters around you cutting your vision down to about 30 or 40 feet from time to time these large black flakes about the size of a fingernail float past in the air like scraps of discarded burnt paper caught on the wind. Mm, yeah, she's feeling overwhelmed and runs blindly, uh, finding herself under the statue with the missing phallus, and she's well, rocking okay. herself with her arm. All right, the up. statue, if you want to be there, which you can be, rather than at the wall, let me just move you slightly, just for the sake of your narrative. There you go. Yeah, perfect. The, the statue is intact. Minus one particular organ. Yeah, she's not threatened. She'll that'll be, you know, between the legs, in front of the legs, just rocking herself there, listening to the chatter. Okay. <clears throat> so you can hear, uh, you can see the little creature with the doll wandering over towards one of the buildings. It uh will try and find you. Can you give me a hide roll, please, Silk? The creature yep. scans the area, but its vision is no better than yours in this filth. Uh, you can see it's holding its dolly by one leg, dragging it slightly on the ground, and its head moves to the left and to the right as it looks for you. Okay. It begins to swing towards you, 
It picks its dolly up to its chest and again says, can you fix my dolly? Its arms falling off. Can you fix my dolly? Its arms falling off. Can you fix my dolly? Its arm has fallen off. Oh and you can gosh. hear some other voices coming closer. I'm not paying for that. It's damaged. I'm not paying for that. It's damaged. Where was the baker? Where was the baker? Where was the baker? More voices nice. are homing in on you. She's at a loss, being invisible, what to do next. Okay. That'll be your Cran. Uh, what do you wish to do back with the salamander? You've dragged Numal. You are aware of the curtain, and probably Victoria has warned you about the salamander and the creature. Okay, so um, um, how badly injured was Numal? Am I kind of dragging him under his arms or...? Yeah, he's unconscious. So as you look at Numel, it's more shock than actually. No, it isn't. He's on 75 points out of 53. That will teach me to use the combat tracker correctly. He's not bleeding, um, but he's deeply unconscious and took a terrific uh, blow to the head when he collapsed. All right. I'll lay him so, down gently so, against the wall. Yeah, so he's stable, but badly injured. I'm just going to kind of prop Numel okay. against the wall and then walk up to Victoria drawing the sword and then step out through the curtain to there because I don't know exactly where the creature is and um, so as I see it I'll point the sword to it and say you don't want to fuck with us today piss off we're going and then okay. ready myself in case it attacks okay as you point your sword at the creature it's belly flattens almost completely against the floor to make a slight scraping noise and you can see silvery muscles bunching along its forelegs doesn't have any rear legs but its forelegs are mightily muscled and you can see bulges where um obviously it's its muscles are as it tenses and I'm preparing to accept a accept a leap and parry it or something but Oh, you mangy metallic fuck. If you come anywhere near us, you'll be in two pieces. One over there, and I'll point with the sword, and one over there. And that one won't look pretty. Okay. Cherry, meanwhile, is unconscious on the floor. Victoria, you're next. Uh, oh, sorry, um, I forgot to say, I will be ready to parry as much as I can in case it does attack me. I, I hope I can drive it off. But Yeah, you can set your parry against this thing. Um, and I'm assuming I'm not raging anymore. No. Uh, no. I'm unconscious then. <laughs> Let me have a look then, Cran. Oh, did you artificially increase your hit points then? Yeah, I mean, I as soon as I come out of rage, I go down to whatever hit points I was on. Okay. So so I what, actually, no, what, I think I've got like 10 hit points left. Yeah, so what are your normal, what's your normal hit point total? 269? About no, one fifty. No, that that's after uh, after the doubling. So it's. Uh, I think. Hang on. Uh, skills. One six six. One six six. Yeah, so, so I still am still, alive. Just you are still just conscious. So I've dragged but, myself out of the building, oh, looking but bad. very tired and very weak. Victoria, it's up to you. You stand uh, <laughs> between the salamander. And the party not getting out of Tarek Nev alive. Uh, in that case, I'm going to charge the salamander. You're going to charge the salamander? Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> um, so my name's Nuff. <laughs> oh. Fair, fair enough. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's assume then that you drop Ugnan to the ground. Uh, drawing your weapon, charging, and then fighting would normally be over 100%. So um, I will let you lower Ugnan to the ground, ready your weapons, and move towards the creature, but you won't be able to attack this round. Yeah, that's right. But you will certainly occupy its attention. You'll get right up into its face, which will probably stop it leaping at Cran, which was obviously your heroic int intent all along. Right. <laughs> I'll take it by that hesitation <clears throat> there. It wasn't your intent. Um, Numel, I'm afraid, is unconscious. Ugnan, you are also unconscious, but can you give me... Um, 
can you give me a channeling role, please? And this is going to be an extremely hard channeling role, channeling resistance role, please. There is a faint, you know how sometimes when you're asleep or when you're a child and you're asleep and you're having a dream and you kept hearing your voice being called in the dream and it actually wasn't a dream, it was your mother trying to wake you up. Ugnan, you have the same thing. You can hear distantly this vague noise in your unconscious state. Let's see if you can, excuse me, respond to it. Don't think so. Excellent. You begin to rouse yourself as Orgiana begins to shake you awake. Dimly, Ugnan, you can see a dark, shrouded and garbed woman kneeling over you shaking you by the shoulders, long dark hair cascading over her face onto your chest so that you can't really see much of her face. As through your half-closed eyes, you can see there's something vague and not quite fully formed about her face as if you're looking at her through rippling water. Um, but you can certainly feel her shaking you and that soft, seductive voice. You must wake. You must wake, Ugnan, my priest. You must wake and serve me. Wake and protect your friends. Wake and serve me. Call out for me and I may be able to help. Give me um, a constitution roll, please. Get me over 50. Not quite. OK, you are beginning to rouse, but not quite yet, I'm afraid, Ugnan. But you are certainly coming round from your unconscious state. OK, can I have resistance? Uh, sorry, initiative rolls again, please, folks. Uh, and obviously, Ugnan, you can give me one as well. The salamander is, or whatever it is, is very, very quick indeed. It now rises up to face you, Victoria. And as tall as you are, uh, this creature is even bigger. It snaps at you with its jaws. The jaws crunch down on you for 12 points of damage and they do a B puncture critical. The B puncture critical is a seven, which is just two more hit points. However, as its jaws close around probably your shoulder, it would be given the height. Can you give me a poison resistance roll, please? Mm. OK, thank you very much. Silk, what do you wish to do? Yeah, as as they're getting closer and closer, she's kind of doing the deny of reality. But um... you're still invisible, remember, so they should struggle to see you. But they can mm -hmm. obviously sense something. Mm -hmm, yeah, she well, she might be rubbing up against something that's making noise that she's not aware of while she's hiding. So she'll she'll get up and and crawl because she she's not going to stand anymore she's just out of it so she's going to crawl um straight back from where she uh where she ran from this way and out of the temple onto the road yeah so she'll head that direction and that'll be what she's doing okay that's fine there's a stock if you want you can try and crawl stealthily if you wish yep and that's her the creatures seem oblivious as to where you are and certainly the one that you are aware of just blunders into the temple of that long forgotten fertility god but doesn't seem to come after you whether it's because of your spell or because of your um, uncanny ability to crawl silently a skill that was be been honed uh, for years of, of with years of practice of sneaking around no woman's houses and hiding under tables, having seduced the uh, the master of the house, you're <laughs> able to escape. Oh, man. Cran. Woozy and damaged, you can see that Victoria has stepped up and bravely taken the first blow from this creature, but seems to have rolled with most of it. I'm How a... heroic Fuck. are we feeling? Fuck. Uh, sorry, do I say I can rouse or hear him rouse just behind me? No, he's um, the other uh, side of that curtain, I think. Um, okay, I'm gonna crouch down and like grab his herb pouch. <laughs> I'm grabbing Agnum by the herb pouch. Excuse me, Agnum, I'm really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, I'm gonna have a good hands. rummage. I'm gonna have a good rummage in there to see if I can find anything. <laughs> that I... 
know. In the middle of combat, you've decided to kneel down and rubbage in Ugnan's pouch. Without any hair. What hero are you? <laughs> and, uh, no hair. Whatever happens, I'm going to pop it in my mouth when I uh, when I find something suitable. So. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Let me close my eyes. Say that again. Leave my leather sack alone. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So what I'm looking for... So I've, I we mean, know you know what you're looking for. We've been I know, I know the block Rook. a few times. I used to be I know, in the Navy. I know what Rook is, so I, I know that heals. I'm looking okay. for anything that can heal concussion. If I've seen him eat anything else that can heal concussion, I'll, I'll All right. do the same. So give me a perception roll then, but uh, given the stress that you're under, give me... But you're also <laughs> a well-known recovering drug addict with acute senses of smell, a bit like the sniffer dogs that they have at the airport. So let's make this a hard perception roll, please, buddy. Okay. And uh, what do you mean recovering? I'm not recovering. I was going to say the same, yeah. So uh, do you have any rook on you, Ugnan, without me searching through yes, your... Eight por- past tense, Jim. You need to rook. be past tense when you use that. <laughs> Basically, the, the rook's in with all the concussion stuff. So there's rook, acubitage, draft, gefnol, um, all those ones. But he'll probably know what rook is. But you've oh, also, I know, I know. But you'll also know what rook requires to be brewed. So that'll take you 20 minutes to get going. I know. Okay, so but it, I know acubitage. I had some of that, and I gave it to right. Me. So take some. So I'll let you find some acubitage. How, How much stuffing a, stuffing a load in my mouth? That's for sure. Okay, well there's 17 nice. acub, acubitage, 27 draft, eight rook. All right, so um, you can take I, take one acubutage because I think you can take one dose per game game turn. Yeah, game no, I was going to just shove the whole lot in my mouth. <laughs> I don't know how okay. I don't know how well you know, you've observed him or whether they have given you, but you know the extra good stuff is the Gefnol bomb. That's the one that heals one hundred flat. Would I know that? I don't think you've heard it before. I think you'd certainly know Rook, um, and you'd know that acubutage is better than Rook. So why don't you take one acubutage? How much does that heal, um, Ugnan? Have you got that to hand? Yeah, D10. All right. So, so John, be, roll yourself. Being, being realistic, did you say you, it was all like separated off in compartments? Because if I recognise Rook I'd, and it was all in the same thing, and I recognise acubutage, yeah, I may what, think everything in there was. I imagine that if he's anything like me, I'd organise it probably by type. So concussion would be in its own little pouch with its own little um, wraps, <laughs> with a Ziploc bag. Yeah, and, <laughs> uh, little bum bag. <laughs> That's all, I mean, I, I don't know what this would be like in game time, but all all crud we do is like whatever's in that one, I'll be just like shoving one of everything in the mouth. <laughs> okay, given given their role, so I think what we do with herbs is you can take one dose of any herb per game round. Otherwise, you know, you'd just have ten rook and you'd have all ten. And I think, you know, that makes a nonsense of having some herbs healing yeah, more than one D ten. So you can take one dose of anything per round. Given your perception role, I'm going to limit you to drugs that you've already taken. You're okay. not raging. So I think you could select either Rook or Acubutage because you've taken them both. The perception role was reasonable. Um, and gosh darn it, I don't really want to see a TPK tonight. OK, um, I'll pop and I know, I know Rook's brewed, so I'll pop an Acubutage. And I'll, yeah. I'll keep a mental note that Ugnum was... I can withhold you out on me on the root supply. That's you what told I, me we had none I want to hear. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> that's going to be that's going to be a reckoning at the end. Of yeah, this. <laughs> friendly. <laughs> so I'm I'm going to pop that. Uh, is it one d ten? Yep. Yep. Ooh, five five uh, concussion hits healed. That takes me up to um, hundred and forty three damage. That's You're plenty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. maybe. Right. And I will then, so that is basically my action. And then I'm going to stand, stand a bit groggily and take like 10 feet step over. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's fine. Victoria. So still chewing on the fruit, you step forward. Uh, I'm, I'm on my way. Victoria, <laughs> you've been bitten, but it was a light wound. The creature now stands in front of you. You can either fight with the Warhammer or you could, of course, un because you did remember you had that conflict over the demonic blade yeah um but you did actually you were persuaded to pick up remorse which is your two-handed or your two-bladed scythe so you can fight with either the warhammer or the scythe it's entirely up to you you will recall that the warhammer strikes as a holy weapon against um the undead and demons 
uh, whereas remorse doesn't have those bonuses but it does get you two attacks and of course it does a heat critical and a cold critical so you can choose which weapon to fight with in that case i would shoot uh, remorse good luck buddy because this Thanks. will be tpk <laughs> yeah eh. and that misses the first scythe swishes wide as the creature just drops to one leg and the scythe first blade passes over its head. Try with the second. Are you sure if it's yeah, got you plus attack... 19 to hit? Yeah, plus four attack bonus. Yeah, right. Oh, 100. Yeah. Nice. I used uh, everything to parry, that's why. Ah, uh, gotcha. uh, that's why it's smart. Clever. A nice natural 100. Yeah. Okay. Defending desperately, you still manage to sneak that second blade home. Obviously, this creature, um, like everything else in Rollmaster, is unused to... Uh, people getting two attacks per round and you hit it for nine points and you do a b slash critical however this is a large creature so i'm just going to call up a large critical table just a large then. so that will be a large critical that's an a large well yes yeah, you've just snuck in haven't you so that's uh it's magic though so can you give me a high open-ended roll please sure Ooh. Ooh, 88 is 15 hit points of damage on it and because you managed to do your critical you get to do is that your cold or your heat attack that was cold, cold isn't it so you get to do a cold a critical on it please regular d100 yeah regular d100 yeah 66 Ooh. 66 is oh. chest strike so you catch the creature in a blow across its chest which causes it to drop whatever it's holding which might in fact be your shoulder uh, another 10 hit points but more importantly this strange silvery uh, beast is stunned and unable to parry for three rounds nicely done Ooh. oh nice work there young victoria <laughs> Okay. Taken. Cherry uh, is still unconscious. Initiative rolls, <laughs> please. Oh, yes, Cran, up to 15. Let's do it. All right. The salamander, uh, still groggy from the attack, steps back and begins to rise unsteadily into the air on powerful wing beats. It's about mm, 15 feet above you, Victoria. Silk. You're back crawling along the road. Do you want to head back to the temple? Do you want to stand? Or do you want yeah. to do something else? Yeah, she'll continue to crawl, look back, and uh, keep in the direction that she was going on the road there. Okay. So if you're crawling, you're moving probably at half your distance, yeah. uh, your normal movement distance, and you're also ruining your dress. Yeah. She's out of her mind right now. <laughs> think of the dry cleaning bill that's right that's Crash why she's team. out of her mind so crawling along the road feeling it with your hands and uh, your knees in your hands as you crawl across uh, lower as you are and closer to the ground as you are obviously it means that you can't see as much of the surrounding city as you could mm. when you were well two three feet higher up um, however your sense of hearing is perhaps now a little bit more attuned as you have to rely on your hearing a little bit more and you can hear the children's the strange children's voices distantly perhaps calling out to each other but they're certainly talking to each other they don't seem to be getting any closer fortunately oh you seem to be moving away from them Right, awesome. Numal, you're still unconscious. Ugnan, yeah. you are now conscious. Uh, the figure of the woman has, as you begin to sit up and look around you groggily, you can still see um, this shrouded figure, almost smoky in appearance, but definitely uh, a human, definitely female step back away from you almost as if she's stepping back through an invisible curtain and she disappears Ooh. 
perception is to try and figure out what's going on so I can act accordingly. Yes, there used to be an orientation role at some point in one iteration of the rules. Yeah, let's have a perception role then. Is that uh, just a regular perception will do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you are at one with the city and you can sense where Silk is. <laughs> um so yes you're aware of the fight uh, just on the other side of the curtain you see that numal is slumped with his back against the wall slumped slightly forwards deeply unconscious um you're aware and you can see cherry's form just for underneath the curtain um she's also unconscious but you can hear the sound of combat on the other side of the curtain what do you want to do Okay, so have a quick look. Numa makes sure there's no blood pumping, which he sees there isn't. Then pokes his head through no. the curtain, looks at Cherry, sees there's no blood coming out of her, and then sees what used to be Cran stumbling towards uh, the salamander, and puts his hand in the pouch for Gefnel, and suddenly goes, "Who's fucking been going through this?" And then um, <laughs> <laughs> tries to get up and head towards Cran to give him, but I don't think he'll get all that done in one round. Give me a. A first, uh, sorry, give me a perception roll. Give me a very hard perception roll, please. With, with that perception roll it just made, you also noticed that a butterfly flapped its wings over the that's other side. Right, yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. to land in the eye of the... Uh, yeah. um, okay, so, Cran, as you look across at Cherry, you can see there is no... The wound that she's got, and you're not sure how she got the wound doesn't seem to be bleeding heavily there's a faint trickle of blood but she's very very pale as if she has lost a lot of blood even though she clearly hasn't lost a lot of blood given the absence of it on the floor so she is actually worse off than that wound would suggest right okay if you take my meaning yeah um some blood basically she's up. Yes, either something sucked her blood or she's been poisoned or whatever. Gotcha. So, what herbs do you want to take? I just want to grab a Gefnor and try and... It's a horrible powdery lich, uh, lichen, lichen, whatever you say, and shove it in Cran's mouth yeah. and get to him. That's that's his next mission. Um, well, given that you know your filing system for your herbs, um, <laughs> let's say that's about 50%. And then 50% for you to move. I think you're within range. So, yes, you could probably move up and shove something in Cran's mouth. Cran, I think you're aware that basically whatever Ugnan gives you near your mouth, you just eat. Unless it would be the first time he shoved something strange into my mouth in the middle of combat. So uh, okay. That's right. That was a sausage. Unless it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it smells of Marmite, you're not going to disagree. <laughs> right. Flat oh, oh, what the fuck? This is a vegetable. What are you doing? It's actually a powdery lichen. Enjoy. Uh, it's flat 100, but I'm afraid it's AF10. Enjoy. <laughs> oh, oh, I, right, love, so I love how the AF is left oh, to yeah. last to know about. That was a small throwaway line there, wasn't it? Um, yeah. uh, AF10. This could get expensive. Oh, <laughs> oh nice. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. I think what you're meant to do with this is snort it, but fortunately I ate it. So it was like, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Okay, so that's a flat D100 back. Wow. It's flat one. Yeah, I just, awesome. just apply that. Yeah, so I'm, whoa, he's feeling fit as a fiddle. I feel <laughs> good, he says. Give me some more. Um, mm. How how expensive is that herb? Uh, let's have a look. That's got to be one most. of the, that's that got to be a really pricey 90 one. 90 gold pieces. Oh, my <laughs> God. That's his house. Okay, you've just had a, a small uh, house. In uh, in Selkai. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you, Ugnan. So, Cran, you are now feeling good. It's 15 feet up. It is. Is Victoria looking strong? <laughs> this would end in tears. I was thinking about doing a, right, brace your legs there, I'm going. <laughs> and launch me up at it. <laughs> uh, it would be better if you hoisted Victoria. You are a big man, Cran. And there's more risk of you just toppling her to the ground in some sort of Python-esque routine. <laughs> he, actually, Cran, Cran doesn't do this very often. He, he, he'll um, unlace it, the bowler from his backpack and just take like 10 foot step over there to get clear himself some space, maybe a bit more. All right, so you're going to try and use a bolus. Yeah. And then 
starts swinging it round his head. I'm not sure if you I can, have enough of an yeah, action to do that. Round no, you can use it next round. So to get that bolus out, uh, to put your, presumably you just, um, I mean, you remember shield breaker, you have to treat with some sort of respect. You can't just drop it on the ground. So you sheath shield breaker, get out your bolus. You'll be able to throw it next round. Okay. Um, and uh, can I try and apply any dodge against this thing in case it dives in? Oh, I think, does it look really stunned? I'm, I'm assuming it does. Yes, it does. It looks very unsteady. It doesn't okay. look as if it's coming towards you. Its head is pointed up at the dark, um, shaded, shrouded ceiling, you know, the shadowy ceiling. So it's obviously it looks as if it's trying to flee. All right. I'll just keep the boat out then and I won't parry at all. Okay, Victoria, the creature is about 15, about 10 to 15 feet above you. So it is probably just out of weapon range or just out of remorse's range. Yeah. Unfortunately. Is this still looking at me? Uh, no, it's looking up at the ceiling. Um, it is obviously going to try and get up and away. I mean, you hurt it quite significantly. I mean, realize that this creature has probably been in the city for hundreds or thousands of years, though perhaps this creature, just like yourself, is affected by whatever strange time manipulation is going on. And maybe for this creature, it's only felt like days. You don't know. But certainly nothing has ever hurt it the way you just hurt it. And it looks like it's trying to flee. Yeah. Uh, are there any like stones or something you can throw at it? There are plenty. There are yeah, there are plenty of bits of rubble, um, fragments of some of the cracked stones, uh, cracked tiles that you can pick up and throw at it. You won't do any significant weapon damage, but certainly no, you can make a throw and just to get the attention. Yeah. Okay. So you bend down, pick up a loose cobblestone and hurl it at the creature and shout something suitably threatening at it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If it can understand your language uh, and is intelligent enough to respond it doesn't give any obvious sign um the flagstone fragment that you throw at it bounces off its tough silvery hide uh cherry is still unconscious motionless initiative rolls please everybody so silk you get to go first you are still on your hands and knees crawling back to the temple you... If she feels that the volume of the voices are getting lower, she'll now pick herself up and start running. Yes, you can. You're aware that they are still milling around the house. So you can pick yourself up and head back so you can move your normal distance. Okay. Can you give me a perception roll, please, as you return to the temple? You'll be aware that when you first approached that temple complex, there was that strange, unresolved puzzle over the doors you remember there were those heat blasted shocked figures skeletons mm, right. lying by the doors that were closed and you quite sensibly guessed that there might be some sort of flame or fireball trap however nothing seemed to happen oh. as you now return to the temple you are aware that the doors are shut again right right so if they're was a trap that didn't go off maybe it'll be second time lucky for the trap but unlucky for you yeah you can see skeletons to the left and to the right of the door that look like they've been knocked some considerable distance from the doors outwards their arms are spread above their heads uh, their bones look blackened by heat. So whatever burnt them, not only incinerated the flesh, but also charred and scorched their, their bones. Some of the metal arms and armor that they were wearing have also um, been melted and fused. So the heat source was considerable. Yeah. Um, she just gets to the doors and then hunkers down there beside them. So okay. Sleeping. All right, give me another perception roll. Uh, this will be a hard perception roll, given the fact you're Sorry. crying. All oh, right, okay, that's fine. So sobbing loudly, breathing heavily, as frightened as you are and worried about the party as you are, you really can't hear anything other than your own heartbeat and the sound of your own sobs. Mm -hmm. 
That's her. Whatever the creature is, it flies higher and higher into the ceiling until in the end, all you can dimly see is its tail as it climbs up into the stout wooden rafters that support the domed ceiling. It is about 50 or 60 feet above you, but lost to sight, I'm afraid, folks. Um, Ugnan, what do you wish to do? Creature seems to have given up and retreated. Okay, he's going to head back to Numal because he's aware that Numal's behind the curtain, so he doesn't know what's going on. And okay. see what see what's going on with him. Okay, um, Numal, um, your situation was brought about by shock because yep. of the terror inspired by the shades. I need you to make first of all a terror roll, please. Okay. And then I want you to make a constitution roll, please. So the constitution roll is normal. You need to get over 45, please. Oh. Ow. Yeah, you wouldn't take that minus 25 penalty, but that's still a 17. Uh, I'm afraid your heart has stopped, so you are dead. Oh, crap. <clears throat> okay, so Numal's heart has stopped. He is in the process of dying. Um, as an elf, I think he's got uh, something like eight rounds before his soul departs his body. Less. So at this point, it's life giving, or you can uh, give him something called life keeping. Can he tell that's happened? Does he need to do a first aid roll or anything? Um, no, I'm not going to ask you to. I mean, a healer of your level and ability, I don't think you need to. I can't tell whether he's alive or dead. I think you'd know whether he's alive or dead. You know that he's dead and you know that now only the most powerful of magic will uh, return Numal to the world of the living. Okay. And elves are more yeah. vulnerable in this situation than, say, the likes of John and yourself. Oh, sorry, Cran and yourself and Victoria. Yeah. Humans cling to life, whereas elves are, because of ennui and so on, are much, much ha uh, not not happier, but are more willing to let go. Okay. You might also notice that, for example, his hair has gone white. Uh, yeah, we, well, I've got the means to get him back to life. Uh, it's a Vel Velcorex, which we've got five of, so we can bring him back. But I'm just thinking he probably needs a, a pather for us, which is life keeping. Well, he brews up the, the life giving because you lose stats, don't you? Yes. Yes, you do. Now, here's the issue. It's yeah. a brew, and I, I, I'd taken, I, I would have brewed up all the um, all the concussion type stuff. I'm quite happy with that, but I don't know. Would, would we have brewed up the life keeping? I suppose if we have five of them. Uh, I don't know. Well, let's make it, let's do this random. Yeah. You haven't, well, remember to, what you can't do is to brew something and then keep it. Yeah, because it goes out. So it? I've yeah, I've always played these things. If it says brew, you actually have to brew it and drink it fresh, because otherwise you just buy this stuff, brew it, and have it in vials, and you'd be back in the realms of Dungeons and Dragons, and you just have healing potions and life giving potions and and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, you're going to have to brew this. So basically, life keeping well, would keep the soul in the body, and life giving brings it brings you back to life again is we're saying that the skull soul's really gone at this point no his soul hasn't gone um so the, so the way death works certainly the way i've i've run it is that when you're initially dead through critical or massive hit damage you've then got a number of rounds depend determined by your race where you are dead but your soul is still with the body and there's no stat deterioration after X number of rounds determined by your race, the soul then leaves. Not only are you dead, but your stats now deteriorate. If your stats deteriorate down to zeros, then you can't come back apart from something like a wish or divine intervention. Even if you do come back, the stat damage that you've had is permanent. So at the mm -hmm. moment, Numal is dead, but his soul is still in the body. But as an elf that soul is going to depart fairly soon. Now, I think for an elf, and I'd have to look this up, um, it's something like eight rounds before the soul departs. Matt's posted it there in the chat, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's uh, even faster. 
How many rounds is it, Matt? Uh, well, Role Master is one to three, and usually three for the weaker elves, one as you get okay. close to a fair elf. Okay. Um, okay, well, let's call it three rounds, in which case probably as you get to the body, his soul departs. Yeah, it's going to take me 20 minutes to either brew the, the um, oh. life give, life keeping or 20 minutes to apply, you know, prepare and paste the um well it says berry apply but i'm sure you have to prepare it after a while it's not an ingest one which is just okay when i bring him back to life here because i'm just looking at the preparation times in the rule book and it says apply is only one to ten rounds to prepare actually which isn't too bad okay so the the salamander has flown up out of sight Ugnan, you know that numel is dead but you're also aware that you can with time bring him back from beyond the veil okay um so i it's going to take one to ten rounds to do this. I suppose he wouldn't really hang around because he doesn't know what's going to go on with this. So, I, I no. Mean, what he worries is that they're living. But, um, okay, look, let's, let's, let's prepare the berry then. All right. So, you start preparing um, berries to deal with Numel. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, Numel is still unconscious. Uh, Cran, the creature has flown up out of sight and the last glimpse of it you have is its tail flickering over a stout wooden beam with a, with a scraping noise and then it goes and vanishes from sight. Cherry is on the ground. Victoria stands breathless with, the, with, his, with her scythe ready. Victoria, keep an eye on that fucker and I'll go over and see how Cherry is. I'll grab her by the shoulders and shake a bit not knowing what else to do okay so cherry is also unconscious she seems to your experienced eye cran and you've come across uh, battle casualties before there isn't a lot of blood you immediately suspect some sort of head injury you can't see any scalp wound head wound anywhere um, but she is motionless and not responding and she feels very pale and very cold to the touch. Ugnan! Uh, Cherry needs you! Oh, Noodle's dead! Water. Well, he doesn't then, get over here! Uh, that's my triaging, and then I'll... Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll kind of prop, prop a head in my, uh, in my lap and like, try to feed her some water. Not no more. Is it, cause, so I'm assuming this is poison or something then. Especially seeing the wyvern is. Can I see any obvious puncture marks in her neck or anything? That well, you can see that she was badly injured across sort of the left hand shoulder, which scored through. Remember, she's got that strange vampiric armor, mm. um, and that was damaged. You can see that she's been bitten, but there's no sort of obvious vampire puncture wounds. But she was indeed bitten. But the wound itself. Um, isn't bleeding that heavily you know she's not losing one hit per round or anything okay yeah i'll i'll, I'll give up on the knowing really what to do with that i've done quick that's all i'll do yeah to use that um livery of the of the sea king you actually need to be near water because the sea serpents themselves are huge colossal creatures bigger than the women but they're yeah. salt water so you need to be near some salt water, and then the creatures will get you out of the city. Yeah, you, just... not the party. Oh, yep. So you've got a get out of jail free card, um, but not the party, I'm afraid. Okay, so Cran, you can tell that Cherry is ill, possibly poisoned. Victoria, um, you can join. So we'll we'll step out the combat tracker then for the time being. Ugnan, you are intent on healing Numel. Well, I can say, I mean, basically, I, at the moment, it takes five rounds to prepare the berry before I apply it, so I, I can, you know, be doing that. We could be going towards the door, and that's what you can try and urge. Let's get out of here. Let's, let's go. Uh, one of you grab uh, this elf, and then you grab the last, okay. and let's get out of here. Okay, if you're preparing that berry, um, that's going to take probably 70%, 80% of your action per round. Yeah. As you prepare this berry by maybe, I don't know, 
I'm not exactly sure what you're doing with it if it's just administered, but I'm assuming you're probably squashing it, extracting the bit that shouldn't be eaten, which is poisonous and so on and so forth. Yeah, I imagine yeah, some, that some means... kind of pestle and mortar type thing, pushing that in and yeah. getting into a paste. Yeah. Yeah. It'll only be able to be about three squares, 15 feet around if he's at 70%. Okay. Uh, the rest of you are going to be dragging people across. So that means probably you're going to get to about here by the time you've got everything prepared. So one of you is carrying, dragging Cherry. One of you is carrying, dragging Numel. So you get to about there when the berry is administered. Meanwhile, Silk, what are you doing? Yeah, she's out you of her mind. Give, give me another perception roll, a normal perception roll, please. So Cr Cran just bellows as he's dragging yeah. people across. Silk, where the fuck are you? Get here right. now. Silk, you can hear Cran shouting for you to return. Probably taken about five or ten minutes, though you're, of course, insensible to the passage of time for various reasons. And then uh, the distinctive booming commanding voice of Cran can be heard coming through the stout stone doors. Yeah, she, those are voices in her head. OK, and you remain crouched by the door. Yeah. Okay, Ugnan, you've got the berry prepared. You can give that to Numel. Yep. Numel, can you give me a channeling resistance roll, please? Can you make it a very hard channeling resistance roll? So you have died and come back to life in a temple that's dedicated to the Lady Orgiana. And at that moment before your soul returns to your body, Orgiana is present, or her essence is certainly present, in the temple. And there is a soulless body in her temple. Now's the time to roll really high. Right? You've got this. Yeah, Ooh, so hey, roll. There you go. Much better. Okay, so... Uh, you thought about following the light to the end of the tunnel and then thought, ah, I've been there. It's boring. Yeah, those wheat fields didn't look that. <laughs> yeah. or, the, or the equivalent of what Numel would have, I suppose, some That's undersea right. scape. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, reef. see, yeah. 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 Reefs. <laughs> Seen those. So, Numel, all you're aware of as you come round is basically a, a lethargy initially as you begin to open your eyes and you shake slightly as the last thing you can remember is this shade leaping at you with a featureless face um, and a very, very cold hands as it grasped you around the head. That's obviously not happening now. And all you are aware of is you're lying on the ground with your companions bent around you. Ugnan, you can hear a faint and a familiar voice saying, hmm, I suppose so. Bit of a shame. Would have been interesting. And Numel is back with you. Yay. OK, so Numel, you are on... One hit point, so you are able to stand and very groggily move around. Um, there is still no sign of Silk. Cran, call as you might, there is still no sign of her. Fortunately, there is also no sign of whatever this serpent creature is. It's not around either. Whether it's hiding up in the rafters or has gone, you don't know. Let's drag him out of here and try and find somewhere with a roof on that we can get out of the way of that serpent thing. Uh Keep an eye out on the ground for any tracks. Silk, I do remember Silk, she ran off, but was she invisible when she ran off? I don't think she was. No, she wasn't, no. Okay, so, uh, yeah, just keep an eye out for footprints of Silk. She's bloody quick, so she could be anywhere now. And keep shouting. Silk-shaped silhouette of Silk through the stone wall. <laughs> <laughs> so, Cranel okay. keeps shout so shouting Silk That's uh, as we're dragging. And Cherry. Numel asks, okay. who's got the stone and the portal rod? The uh, magnetic one that was at the uh, rod. Yeah, I think I think you've got the portal rod, Ugnan, yeah. because yeah. you'll recall that until you figured out how to deactivate it, 
uh, making an attunement roll, you needed, you'd called on Orgiana to help you. The Ashling Stone, I think, might be in Cherry's possession because she was the one who retrieved it. That's what yeah, I thought. I think you're right. Yeah. So I did the tune okay. on the on the rod, so I think we know how to turn it one way or the other, and I should, or deactivate it. So that's, that's right. Okay. But I think Cherry that's had right. the other one. So, yeah. So Cherry's got the Ashling Stone. You know that you're looking for one more portal rod, which from Cherry's visions um, are somewhere near water. Okay, so you can retreat to the doors, uh, taking Cherry with you. There is still no sign of silk. The doors are closed, and you remember they open outwards. Uh, silk, you can, yeah, you can hear crying as you step out. Silk, as you see the others emerge, do you want to reveal yourself or not? She's just out of it. She's crying and bawling, hands on her, or sorry, head on her shoulders, uh, arms grasping her legs, huddled up in a ball beside the door. Okay. Guys, as you step out then, all you can hear is the heart-wrenching sobbing of some sort of humanoid. But you can't see anything making that noise. Do we know it's a woman's crying or anything? Yes, you can tell it's a woman. Pull yourself together. Now one. you've not. <laughs> now you've never heard uh, <laughs> silk cry before, so you're not aware and have no way of identifying it as silk. But the crying, whatever it is, is very, very close to you. Cherry is obviously still um, lifeless. Numel is staggering. Cran is almost fully recovered. Victoria is doing quite well. Ugnan is tired, but okay. There is no sign of, of silk, but you can hear this strangely uh, loud and close at hand sobbing. So I'm going to try and investigate the sobbing. Yeah, I mean, I'll try and yeah, do just... the same because we don't know if it's like general voices, do we really? No, you've not heard. Remember the city sometimes or the demons sometimes use illusions and trickery to try and lure you into danger or to pull you away from whatever these demons happen to be guarding. This noise doesn't sound like one you've heard before. You've never come up. You haven't come across demons crying to try and pull you away from things. You've ha you have come across demons calling out for help. Are there any buildings close by with a roof? Or, or even one of these towers with a wooden door might work. One of these ones like this one. It's from no. the roof. Okay. You can dimly recall something of your journey here. Mm -hmm. And I'll push through that map. That basically Back. shows your route to the temple, I hope. That's it. That's where you are now. And there was the temple with the fertility deity over here whoops make that a little bit smaller over here right there are other you could dimly see ruined buildings off to your left and to your right none of them had roofs on them as you vaguely recall give me a memory roll please cran you flew over the city mm. uh, in your airship what was my memory roll I had to make again? <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. Well done. Um, yeah. You can probably vaguely remember that there weren't actually many buildings with intact roofs. Certainly in the main part of Tarek Nev. So let me call up that city map as well. You've pretty much hit them all. Keating is, is then which is the closest. So Cran says that we've got to get the wounded under cover. Give them some chance and then we'll come back or I'll come back and try and find silk maybe with Victoria. That's all we can do at the moment. You'd been using the palace across to the northwest as a refuge. Yeah, I think that's the that's what quarter of a mile away. Yeah, something like that. Can I make a reception? So that's going to take uh, uh, yes, bothering me just to try and stop it, trying to perceive as actually uh, silk this voice that you can or crying you can understand. OK, she's beginning to mutter words, so let's make that a normal perception roll then. No. 
it's humanoid human but that's about all you can tell silk you're still um crying unconsolably unaware of the other party members around you yes you heard cran and she's kind of waving it away and she that's why she spoke stop it stop tormenting me okay we've got to be careful around here we can't shout her out because uh there's all those little creatures around i understand she's supposed to be waiting out here that was the, that was the plan so she can't she must be like someone must have taken her then uh who, who's the tracker here who's good at tracking is it cherry 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 yeah. is probably your best tracker but she is obviously lifeless Cran will have a look. He's not bad. Well, he's not as good as Cherry, but yeah. I'll have, and while you're doing that, I'm going to have a look over Cherry. Oh, he's actually surprisingly adequate. <laughs> <laughs> hey, next, you the wait told you that all the time. Yeah. The <laughs> next, yeah. The next Dungeons and Dar- Dungeons and Dragons character I create is going to be called surprisingly adequate. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> here we go. He's having a look. Ooh, Ooh, wow. Nice. I am more than surprisingly adequate, even though my foe is at minus five, plus <laughs> ten to your next swing and foe must parry next round. Yeah. Um, my tracking skill. I don't know why you've got all those penalties. <laughs> Me neither. Um, <laughs> right. So <laughs> there are no tracks per se of where Cherry has gone, but the sobbing noise that you can hear is not only very loud, It is coming from something which is concealed or hidden or invisible um, by the left-hand side of the door. (coughs) Cherry? No, that's definitely wrong. Silk? Is that you? I can't remember what your name is. I'm I'm basically been waiting again and again for you guys to say her name. So you said it a second time. She'll again say, again, invisibly, just stop it. Get out of my head! Silk, it's me, you stupid cow! Where are you? (laughs) (laughs) Okay, now she snaps out of it. (laughs) Yeah, now she knows that undead, uh, they're just (laughs) way kinder than Cran. Yeah, they wouldn't call her a cow. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Cran's usually as counselor. She knows the way to... Okay. She'll stay invisible, but she'll get up and just fling her arms around the first person. Oh, hi, Victoria. (laughs) <laughs> so victoria okay. gets overwhelmed with uh hugs okay you, uh, you survived but how victoria you can feel obviously silk uh embrace you obviously upset you're no stranger to mages being able to cast invisible make things invisible so i won't sort of ask for any sort of shock and initiative as you suddenly <laughs> yeah, grasp back by invisible creatures <laughs> Um, I take out remorse and swing at this invisible creature. Silk, do you want to... How long does your invisibility last? 24 quite... hours. Oh, wow. Okay. Is it like uh, D&D, so it's um, dispelled when you take an offensive action? Yeah, exactly. Remember. Always yeah, smack okay. her in the face. Uh, <laughs> That's right. Okay. <laughs> um, I would imagine that embracing somebody doesn't count as an offensive action. Depends um, how hold she holding or hugging for. Is it a three second rule? That's true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> okay. Um, right. One of those other rules in role playing games, it's almost impossible to adjudicate. So the party are now all together, albeit that Silk maintains her invisibility out of nervousness. Where do you want to head next within the city? You stand at the doors to this temple complex. You're aware that your way out, if you head back the way you've come, will take you via those demonic children. They're not powerful individually, but if you let them gang up on you, they can be quite a handful. Although they struggle to get past your armour and your stout defence, and certainly there are a number of you in the party are quite skillful with your weapons, they are one bite as it will be enough to drop some of you, and then you really will be in trouble. So you can head back that way, or you can risk heading deeper into this temple complex that you've not explored. I'll go second Cherry over. I'll just give you a roll. Okay. Uh, Cherry is dead. Deed. Dead. Deed. Deed. What? So this is where 
um, her stats in game terms, her stats will have begun to deteriorate. Uh, yeah. So this is where you can now use life giving to bring her back to life. But her stats will have deteriorated. Yeah. So you could bring it back as a cabbage. <laughs> oh, oh, really? That, that, that bad? Theory. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, yes. Um, in game terms, it's it's yeah. not 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 long enough has happened. Um, they don't deteriorate that quickly. Um, though it's though it's quite easy to drop somebody in Rollmaster, I to you know, you're unconscious, you're dead, to actually kill them off totally in game terms. Um, once you get to your level, is actually not that that easy unless you start burning, incinerating, and so on. So I was just thinking, like, in, if we brought her back to life, she would um, be her invention days would be over, but she'd be able to function normally in a in like a civilian role type thing. Um, depending on the on the duration, actually, it's entirely feasible that she could come back to life and still be able to adventure. It all depends on basically her stats. Now, Cherry was a very skillful thief. She could come back as a very, very good thief, perhaps not quite as talented, but certainly useful. If you're unlucky, yes, she might come back as more of a liability than a help. Do you want to pause now? and prepare another berry yeah or do you want to take the cherry you do because basically if we're going to, have to go through i want everybody up so uh six rounds and then the life keeping kicks in that's two thousands worth of gold we've spent on her actually the other 90 so 2100 gold we've spent on herbs okay Ooh, worth every penny that's what i was looking at yeah but then that, that's what, why we, that's why we bought them right <laughs> Yeah, what were you doing yeah. that, mate? Could you get could you get a brew on, and I'll stick my armor on, and um, a couple of root nodules would just tie be right over until uh, till tomorrow. <laughs> oh, that's and awesome. I know you've got them, he says. <laughs> I, I couldn't help notice that you had some in uh, in that in that pouch down there. Oh, what? Oh, um, uh... no, that couldn't be right. That, that was um, Rukuo. It's very much like <laughs> Rukuo. <laughs> But not. Craig Trent narrows his eyes at you. He narrows his eyes at you. Hugman, mate. Fine, fine. fine. He'll throw, throw one rook at him. You've got to make it last, lad. I'll give you another <laughs> one. And he'll give you a rook. <laughs> All right, I'll, okay. I'll get a brew up. Uh, so apart from concussion damage, I think you are all okay. I don't think there are any bleeding wounds or anything of that nature at all. Um, yeah, I think I'll pass actually some, some draft around. We need, we need to try and rest up somewhere. Well, just get a pot on now. Keep an, keep a, keep your eye out, and then maybe we can just take a couple of herbs just outside here. Uh, fair, fair, fair point. Hunker down by the doors of the temple. Produce or prepare a small campfire using some of the brush and materials around you so that Ugnan can brew some of the unguents and poultices and healing potions that he needs to. The rest of you, you'll recall that strangely in this city, you're not, you don't ever suffer fatigue. You found it difficult to sleep. You remember that you found it difficult to eat, uh, not drink, but certainly eat. Um, your body clocks have been completely thrown out and all of you are beginning to get um, a greater sense of disorientation and discomfort the longer you spend in the city. And the longer you spend under this time mumbo jumbo effect. So you can rest for an hour or so. Then where do you want to go? All right, can we... We've got to find that other rod, don't we? Can we get out some of these herbs then? Yep, yep. So if you want to um, have five minutes just sorting out what herbs you will want to take, that's fine. Yeah, Numal new, new sort of, um, he's a bit listless. Um, seems quite depressed and quite placid just does what Ugnan tells him to do but he isn't showing any initiative or initiative of a small eye or any sort okay. of enthusiasm for what's going on around him okay um cran give me a perception role you notice that the apathy that Numel is showing and you've seen it before in in uh you know you've served in a number of mercenary companies uh Numel is clearly 
um, suffering from battle shock. He'll need watching. Uh, any sort of combat situation, he could go either way. He could completely break down or he could go berserk. I'm going to get, um, if I notice that, I'll get a um, the battered old silver hip flask out of my pocket and uh, sit down next to him and say, I'll take a swig and then pass it over to him, just not say anything. <laughs> Cran, a man that's of my, few words, but that's my most em- the most empathetic I could possibly be. Numor pushes yeah. away the flask and closes his eyes. Cran shrugs, Aww. puts the lid back on and puts it in his pocket and stands up. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Just that's what amazing. else do you want me to do? <laughs> yeah. My hour is up. Well, he's, he's, be- he's beyond help. <laughs> Yeah, Ugnan, Ugnan, do you have that spell for creating a pit? <laughs> <laughs> I think Fran will probably walk away, sniff the contents of his flask, and then then realise that oh, that was the urine sample I was supposed to deliver. Oh. That probably explains a lot. Oh. <laughs> ah, extra large gulp. <laughs> so that's probably taken you hmm, the best part of. Half an hour. It's amazing what you can get done. Where do you want to head now? As I said, you've got this. Well, I don't know about the last, yeah. but I know I'm completely out of any kind of arcane energies. I can use the pearl, but then they're mm-hmm. one they're one uses. Yeah, let's go and. Oh, my back aches. Let's go up to the uh, back up to that temple. We have to risk the. We basically like, walked into three straight horrible fights. I think I've done more sleeping yeah. than fighting. <laughs> okay. So let me just clear all the tokens off this map. You can follow the path back to the sign of or the scene of Victor's disgrace to the fertility temple. You can hear distantly the voices of these demons sort of talking and communicating. Moving your way through the murk, you can remember that you are walking across what was once probably tilled and tendered ground. Um, There's a lack of weeds and vegetation. The temple is across to your left, the strange fertility temple. Um, Across to your right, there are the outhouses and outbuildings of uh, what were perhaps once gardeners or priests cottages or whoever else attended here. Can you all give me perception rolls, please, as you cautiously but quickly make your way through the murk? Goodness me, that's a fantastic set of rolls from all of you, apart from Cran, who's still flushed with his success at tracking. (laughs) Um, Moving quickly and carefully, you use the vegetation as a screen despite Cran's sort of um, less than stealthy blundering through them, to screen your movement towards the wall from these demonic creatures, which you can distantly see milling around with no real intent, it seems, off in the distance. So you can get to the wall, you can climb over the wall, and then you can do whatever you wish. Where do you want to head to in the city? Do you want to head back to the palace to rest? Yeah, I think the palace would make sense to me. By the most sort of direct route possible, I'm assuming. Yeah, we've taken this route uh, before, yeah, anyway, yeah, so yeah. if we can follow the way we've gone before, if it's still able to be judged. Uh, with some difficulty, yes. I'm going to ask one of you to make a navigation roll of some description. So if you've got navigation... That will be great. Or it's going to be a very hard perception roll because remember your visibility is reduced. You've got no compass. So you're navigating by landmarks, but you can only see the landmarks that are about 60 feet in front of you. Now, I only had a very limited time with Sarissa on board the ship to teach me either a bit of sailing or a bit of navigation. And I'm now regretting that I know a bit more about sailing than I did. <laughs> I'm sure in your time spent with Sarissa, you spent lots of time learning navigation, but none of it was of the nautical. Uh, I was I was learning knot tying. <laughs> oh, yes, I can believe so. <laughs> 
So anybody want to make a navigation roll or one of you is going to say, follow me. I think it's this way and make a perception roll. Even if Silk were the best at it, you guys would not trust her. <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> okay. Under this bush. Yeah. <laughs> follow me. Yeah. I know exactly where we're going. Yeah, sure. Um, Where's the portal? Yeah. Why are we going out, why are we going out the red gate again? Yeah. Okay, well, Cherry's not bad at navigation, and she points vaguely in a northeasterly direction. Ugnan, um, can you give me a perception roll, please, and see if you agree with Cherry's roll? So you need to roll under uh, over. You need to roll under ninety three, please. But you can use your modifier as a penalty to your die roll if that makes sense so you want to roll low and whatever boost you've got you can apply that so take the perception take the perception off it yes that's right i'm I'm trying to make sure that you, you know your roll makes logical sense so the more skilled you are the more likely you are to roll under her 93 and agree with her Open-ended, presumably? Yeah. Yeah. So you agree with Cherry, and with the two of you leading the way, you can get back to Vramavere's palace and rest up and recover. And that's where that session ended. In case you didn't realise, that meant the previous session, Cherry was actually killed by the salamander, bled dry, and Numal's shock from concussion damage also stopped his heart and he too died. That's the end of Numel and Cherry. Numel's character will be replaced. Jan will carry on playing. He'll re- replace that with a, another character which is coming up. And Cherry's player has decided not to play any longer due to unforeseen circumstances. I wish him the very, very best. Thanks very much for watching, listening, subscribing, all of that lovely stuff that stops me having to mail or post or send things to notify you when these are. I try to keep it to Fridays, 8pm my time, which is GMT or BST all depends whether it's a podcast or YouTube what time it gets released. Anyway, happy gaming. Cheers. Bye bye.